Hi, my name is Vasiliki Kalkani. I teach business studies to year five high school. And this is the second year that we're implementing an innovative program on entrepreneurship in secondary education. Major obstacle in introducing innovation education that has to do with entrepreneurship is that the spirit or the cultural entrepreneurship is absent of an education system, maybe from a country in general. So you could be talking about exciting and innovative things that have to do with entrepreneurship in the context of a school project to students and families that they've never heard about it before. It might prove that it's extremely difficult to convince teachers and parents to get involved and support a project or an idea on entrepreneurship. Another problem is the lack of reliable resources that are easily accessible and available. There's extremely interesting material on entrepreneurship online, but sometimes it's difficult and time-consuming to locate it and use it for a school project. We need to build teaching communities at local, national and international level that encourage innovation through content sharing. Most of it, we need a systematic and certified way to communicate best practices in entrepreneurship, in education and beyond. Hi, I'm Michaela Garabet. I'm a teacher of physics at ICT at National College Victoria Moises from Bucharest, Romania. Uh, I'm here to tell you a story today. I will tell you the story of introducing ICT in education. The story began 70, maybe 20 years ago in Romania. Um, first, I was a learner. When I saw the first computer in my house, I, I knew he will, uh, it will change my, uh, my, my future, definitely and uh, forever. Uh, at the beginning, I was just learning. I learned how to use uh, a computer for my own use. But in a few years, I managed to become a teacher trainer. Uh, now I'm working also in the field of uh, helping other teachers to use ICT in uh, their lessons. I have also made my PhD thesis uh, covering uh, the subject of the subject of uh, uh, new approaches of physics experiments in the middle school especially and high school. Uh, I am also uh, trying to convince my colleague to use ICT because uh, I believe uh, it's a great opportunity that the 21st century is giving uh, to the educational system. Uh, I also work in the field of making uh, educational content, digital educational content, and in Romania, we are using today e-books, we are using digital lessons, we are using web 2.0 application and all kind of stuff uh, which are uh, related to the new technologies. As I already told you, I came from an innovative school where uh, the benefits of training my colleagues in uh, subjects like using ICT in different kind of lessons are, uh, are uh, very clear uh, stated today. Uh, even in uh, such situation, I'm here, with, I'm there with my colleagues every day. Some of them uh, are still reserved in what concerning uh, the new technologies and uh, uh, they are reserved to use robotics, to use tablets, to use e-books, uh, to use, I don't know, uh, all kind of applications, uh, web 2.0 and, uh, and so on. But uh, I, I'm, uh, I'm very optimistic because I know that uh, in a few years, if we will talk uh, again uh, after five years from today, uh, I could tell you that all my colleagues uh, already use tablets and uh, uh, e-books and uh, all of them are using robots in their classrooms and uh, all the students are very happy and uh, my colleagues also and uh, most important the parents of our students are very pleased to uh, have uh, their uh, uh, children in a school like uh, the school where I came from. Hi, 
Hi, my name is Eric Domonchot. I work at Basel Abbey School in the south of England, and I've been um, the school has been part of the ODA, ODS uh, program now for a year. We are a small, independent secondary school. Um, in fact, we also have um, a nursery and a prep school, which is located at different sites. Um, we are in Battle, near Hastings, in the south of England. Um, we have a total of 300 students, that's 250 at the senior school and 50 students at the prep school and a nursery. And the type of answers I'll give you today will include colleagues' feedback from uh, the nursery all the way up to the senior school, including the um, IT manager, who has been kind enough to help us along the journey um, of uh, innovation, digital learning innovation. Now, your first question, um, you know, what kind of change um, innovation uh, did we try to implement? Now, first, we'll talk on behalf of our IT manager, who's had to struggle, you can imagine, a very old building uh, with um, uh, neglected infrastructure. Um, he um, developed a new um, virtualized uh, system um, that allowed us to make great stride in, in laying out uh, fiber optic cables for uh, the school and therefore increasing our bandwidth. His major obstacle first was the firewall and the wet filters which have been set wrongly and I'm sure we're not the only one um, who are has had to trouble, has had to deal with this sort of trouble in the past. Uh, we had vast amount of bandwidth taken over by illegal torrents, literally pouring down single PCs. Um, so you had to deal with that, first of all, uh, in order to um, make more bandwidth available for us. Um, he also chose to migrate all the uh, Windows XP, we were on XP four years ago, to Windows 7. Now you will know that XP will cease to be supported by Microsoft in 2014. That's a gigantic step. It was a gigantic step for us, small school. I can only imagine how difficult it might be for much larger schools, uh, such as others in the program. Um, as I said, it's, it's next stage, which has helped us gain uh, fellowship, if you like, into the ODS uh, partnership is was to virtualize the entire infrastructure. Now, on the other side, the other side of the coin, of course, is teachers. Um, we keen, we keen to start, um, if you like, e-portfolio as early as possible. Now, our nursery, we've deployed a, a system called Tapestry, which allows us to track students from day one, if you like, and we'd hope to use some of this data over when the students go to the prep school and then eventually the senior school. So the, the, the change, I guess, was to uh, deploy that sort of e-portfolio. Very early on, we also use similar systems up in the prep school where we use um, uh, um, YouTube uh, channels which have been uh, uh, w w with the right um, amount of, of um, so to speak, passwords and encoding. Our prime concern, of course, is children's safety and who access the data and how we can control that. So that's very important for us to make sure we, we have all the safeguards in place. Um, Moving on, what was the need for that change? Well, going back to the view of an IT manager, if you like, is, is that simply technology moves on at an alarming pace. And if you're not very careful, you'll be left behind. And students come to schools now expecting a certain level of digital fluency. Okay? They want access to the internet. They want wireless access. They want uh, the latest or access to the latest gadget. If they can, they will, they will request that. 
Um, so we have to make sure we um, make decisions that don't cost too much for the school, but of course will help uh, satisfy that need. Now, of course, um, technology is not the answer. And, and everyone, and many lessons I've observed, quite often it actually is more harmful. Uh, the, the teacher will hide behind the technology rather than teach. So that needs to be addressed too. So if we put that aside, looking at the problem as it is, what was the need for change? Technology is moving at an alarming pace. We need to keep up. Um, as far as teachers are concerned, what is the need for change? Well, of course, ePortfolios allows good um, record keeping. And of course, we can include parents in the loop so they can look at their child's progress in real time. Uh, of course, we can reduce uh, staff time. Uh, you know, why perhaps in the past you take pictures, you would, you would collect evidence, you cut them, you file them. Now with an iPad or any, any tablets, you can take your pictures, you can, you can upload that into whatever e-portfolio you're using, and it's done. Of course, it takes time to set up, and I'll talk to that in a minute. Cost, therefore, might also go down over a long term. No, you're not printing as much. You know, just that is a factor to consider. And it's being a manager myself allows me to, I must say, keep a better track of my own staff and see what, what they're up to and, and monitor their, um, uh, their, their progress there too. Uh, the most important, I think, it allows easier tracking of children's progress and to identify gaps in the learning so you can quickly deal with that and rectify the situation as and when it comes. Now, what major obstacles did we face? <laughs> Quite a lot. Um, still uh, having to struggle and face a few. Reluctance to change. Now, across the board, that's been a problem. Um, teachers do not trust IT in general. Not all of them, let's not generalise this, but uh, often, often, um, there's, there's a lack of trust. Um, founded, unfounded, I'll have up to you. Um, um, staff interest, as I said, lack of trust, lack of interest. You know, why change a system that works already? You know, if the, if the teacher gets good grades, why would he or she how to adopt an entire new way of teaching. That's a problem that we've had to deal with. Um, well, of course, the, uh, getting the equipment to start with, the iPads, the tablets, the IWBs, everything um, <laughs> takes time. Not many schools um, have access to that technology. Not enough. There's nowhere... Oh, often you'll find teachers say, we haven't got enough. Um, uh, material, software, hardware to use to. The tracking um, is still tricky. Now, eventually we'd love to take a student in year two, say for example four years old, and track his or her progress over the entire time they are in school, from the nursery to the prep school to the senior school. Uh, that is our goal. Of course, analysis and tracking is an issue. And until that's been dealt with um, properly, uh, and, and that system that will account for every single child, um, and, and then, then, then we have that, that will be another obstacle we will we'll face. Access to internet from parents is an issue there too. Not all parents um, um, have access to the internet, so that's something to bear in mind. Was the change sustainable? Who did we ask for help? Well, the training, once you get the training in place, teachers gain confidence and tend to use it more and more. Security is an issue. You need to make sure uh, credentials and all the sites, uh, security measures are vetted uh, by whoever is in charge of that aspect in your school before you do anything. Financing is an issue to try and get all of the money to do this has been a struggle, but we've managed. Parents are a key key stakeholders. They must be included in the loop. Uh, otherwise, yes, the change is sustainable. Providing you take the right steps now, I believe 
uh, that you can save money over the long term um, and by virtualizing your computer network. And of course, in terms of tracking and monitoring the students, I think technology is the key and access to mobile devices will, will make this dream come reality. Hi, I'm Paula Furtado and I teach in Matilde Rosa Araújo. It's a secondary school. I teach physics and chemistry to students with age between 13 and 15 years old. I try to introduce a more practical and collaborative teaching of astronomy in the 7th grade. Introducing hands-on activities, Stellario and Celestia as support programs in the classes, and a regular participation in international projects like the International Asteroid Search Campaign uh, and the Dark Skies Rangers. Nowadays, all the teachers of my department work and involve their students in these programs. Every year, we do Astro Matilde, a night of astronomy for the parents. But uh, uh, the need to change. Our school is in a disadvantaged area um, where the students had bad results and uh, sometimes bad behavior. And it was uh, necessary to change things. Uh, I have, uh, I did a formation with Nucleo and, um, and took some contacts with projects like uh, ODS and GTTP. Um, with this, my classes have changed and the, the results have changed too, for better. Initially, the other teachers like the idea, but don't feel confident to change things. Um, they, they, they did the nuclear formation as well, plus a more collaborative work, which proved to be important to improve the teacher's confidence. Our major problem, it was uh, it was uh, is that we have to to teach a great amount of things in the, such a short period of time, which doesn't allow us to use this method to different unities of the subject. Казвам се Бисара Гърджелеска, учител съм по математика, информатика и информационни технологии. Работя в 32-то СОО Петър Денеков София. При нас се обучават ученици на възраст от 5 до 19 години. Имаме паралелки с изучаване на английски язик и разширено изучаване на изобразително изкуство. В гимназиален етап се обучават ученици в профил технологичен английски язик с изучаване на информатика и информационни технологии. 39-то СОО е от първите училища разкрили такъв профил в София. Училището разполага с два компютърни кабинета. На разположение на преподавателите са лаптопи и проектори. В цялото училище има безжична интернет връзка. През тази година училището се включи в националната програма ИКТА в училище и ще получи 13 терминала по тази програма за обзавеждането на компютърен кабинет. Всичко това позволява ползването на нови технологии и практики в училище за подобряване на качеството на обучение. Учителите ползват компютърна техника за подготовка на своите уроци. Те използват своите лаптопи и проектори, за да могат да обогатят и разнообразят преподавания материал. Учат се да споделят информация помежду си. Ползват електронни учебници. Когато информацията е нагледена и се представя по съвременен начин, учениците освояват полезно учебния материал и постигат по-добри резултати. През цялото време полагаме усилия в насока промяна на мисленето, както сред учениците, така и сред учителите и търсене на начини за комуникация, споделяне на информация и нови добри практики. Като Microsoft Life at Edo с набор от услуги, хоствани от Microsoft, също така сайт с учебни материали и работни файлове, изготвени специално за нуждите на училището, Dropbox, Google сайтове, Google документи. 
Всички усетихме колко е добре да ползваме готови или създадени от нас материали и то от всяка свързана с интернет точка. За учениците това се оказа разнообразен, достъпен и интересен начин за получаване на нови знания. В работата си ползваме сайтове с полезна и интересна информация, онлайн учебници, упражнения и тестове, национални образователен портал, енциклопедични ресурси от ЗНАМБГ, сайта Виртуална България, мрежата на учителите Новатор и Тичър БГ, материали от общността Начално образование, онлайн ръководство за лаб програмираме w3schools.com за нуждите на паралелките с информатика и информационни технологии. Основно за нас учителите е да разберем необходимостта от ползването на нови технологии и възможността за съхранение, споделяне на данни и материали, както с учениците, така и с свои колеги, и то не само в България. Някои от колегите имат страх от новите технологии, други смятат, че е проблем владаенето на английски език, а някои се страхуват, че така навлизат в непознати води и може да изгубят контрол върху ситуацията. Но такава е учителската професия. Тя е предизвикателство и всеки учител трябва да полага усилия, за да може да се развива, а оттам и учениците и училището. Учителите все пак са основният двигател на промените в образованието. Учители по английски език от 39-то соло посещават обучителни курсове в Англия и се запознават с различни образователни програми и методи на преподаване, срещат се с колеги от различни държави и обменят опит. След завръщането си, те прилагат новостите, с които са се запознали и така работят за повишаването на знанията и на мотивацията на учениците. Това е още едно доказателство, че всички печелят при споделянето на опит. Заедно с госпожа Николова и госпожа Пепиева от 39-то соло участваме в пилотната фаза на проекта ОДС за България – Open Discovery Space. Open Discovery Space е една страхотна възможност за всички в сферата на образованието. Това е отворена, иновативна платформа, която свързва ученици и учители от Европа с много дигитални учебни ресурси, които сега са налични или предстои да бъдат създадени в отделните държави. Така, електронни материали могат да достигнат до много повече ученици и учители в цяла Европа. Ще се радвам да видя една платформа, където материалите са подбрани и носят добри образователни практики. В работата си по подготовка на уроците, често ми се налага да преглеждам десетки, понякога стотици сайтове, да намеря подходяща информация. Обикновено това е свързано с сваляне на файлове, тяхното преглеждане, така губя много време, а наистина не е ясно дали сваленият материал ще ми свърши работа. Благодарение на Open Discovery Space ще имаме възможност свободно да черпени информация, да ползваме различни инструменти, да създаваме собствени онлайн библиотеки, да създаваме общности, а и сами да предоставяме учебни материали, добри практики, техники. Учители от различни страни ще могат да обменят опит помежду си. Някои с добри идеи за съдържание, други с добри идеи по начина на изграждане на платформата. Да могат да влязат в контакт с преподаватели от други страни в Европа и да обменя мисли и материали с тях е голям шанс за мен. Смятам, че ще бъде много интересно и за учениците да осъществят контакти и да работят по общи проекти с връзници от други държави. Дори може да се организират онлайн състезания. Много съм обнадеждена от този нов шанс, който се предоставя на всички, считащи себе си за част от процеса на образованието. И чакам с нетърпение възможността да работя за тази идея и да я видя да се осъществява.